Değerli katılımcılar, hepinize hoş geldiniz. Bugün bu Cemsef Uluslararası Müzik, Bilim, Enerji ve Mühendislik Fuarı 2020 kapsamında geleceğin bilim insanları ve sanatçılarını yetiştirmek adlı ikinci çalıştayı düzenleyeceğiz. Dear participants, welcome all of you. Today we will organize second workshop that entitled Raising Future Scientists and Artists in the, with the scope of Buca Imsef 2020. Bilim yarışmalarında başarı için temel faktörler konu başlığı ile Sayın Monika Raharti konuğumuz. Kendisinin kısa, kısaca özgeçmişinden bahsetmek istiyorum. Monika Raharti, Endonezya Genç Bilim Adamları Merkezi'nin direktör, direktörüdür. Bandung Teknoloji Enstitüsü'nde fizik bölümünden mezun olduktan sonra Endonezya'nın Bandung şehrindeki Parahyangan Katolik Üniversitesi fizik bölümünde 13 yıl çalıştı. Bandung Teknoloji Enstitüsü'nde eğitimine devam etti. 1997 yılında Malezya Sultan İdris Üniversitesi Teknik ve Meslek Fakültesi'nde optik ana bilim dalında yüksek lisans programını ve doktorasını tamamladı. 2011-2013 yılları arasında Endonezya Jakarta'daki Surya Üniversitesi'nde öğretim üyesi olarak görev yaptı. Fizik eğitimi konusundaki ilgi alanı onu fen öğretmenleriyle çalışmaya itti ve bu sistemi geliştirmenin yanı sıra ortaokullardaki öğrenci ve öğretmenleri fen araştırmalarında aktif olarak teşvik etmeye başladı. Halen Asya Pasifik Genç Bilim İnsanları Konferansı Başkanı, Uluslararası Genç Bilim İnsanları Konferansı'nın yürütme kuralı, kurulu üyesi ve Endonezya Fizik Derneği'nin konsey üyesidir. Sorry. Uh, dear Dr. Monica Raharti is our guest, will be a speaker with the topic of key factors for success in science competitions. We would like to talk about her brief resume. Monica Raharti is the director of Center for Young uh, Scientists in Indonesia. After completing her bachelor's in physics in Institute Technology Banduk, she worked in physics department, Paragyangan Catholic University in Bandung City, Indone Indonesia for 13 years. She continued her study in the Institute Technology Banduk and completed master pro program in physics in uh, 1997, uh, majoring in nonlinear optics and completed her PhD in Faculty of Technical and Voca Vocational Sultan Idris University in Malaysia. She was a faculty member in Surya University in Jakarta, Indonesia during uh, 2011 to 2013. Her concerns on physics education brought her to work with science teachers, and she is actively promoting research in science to students and teachers in sc secondary schools, as well as developing the system of certification of research teachers um, and research schools in Indonesia. Currently, she serves as the president of Asia's Pacific Conference of Young Scientists, steering committee member of International Conference of Young Scientists, and council member of Indonesian Physical Society. Dear guests, we would like to invite Dr. Monica Raharti to the stage for her speech. Dear Professor Dr. Monica Raharti, stage is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you to uh, uh, Ms. Umit Karadamir for inviting me to this such a prestigious event Buka himself uh, 2020, and also congratulations to uh, all of the people in the organizing committee who has been uh, organizing this very successful event. Well, let me share your scre my screen to uh, to start. Yeah, I hope you can see this. All right. Well. Um, Today, I would like to share with you uh, some about key factors to success in science uh, competitions. Uh, the, present, the presentation will be, the content of the presentation will be introduction, a little bit about CYS, 
and then the result of study on key factors of success in science project competition and some recommendation for you. Well, uh, let me introduce a little bit about my center. Uh, my center is located in Jakarta, Indonesia. We work with a lot of people, um, especially with students and mentors uh, in 15 provinces since 2006. So we have uh, about 10,000 students involved in our activities and 3,000 mentors and about 5,000 research project with us. Not only that, we also have uh, alumni of the international competition. We call it Association of Young Researcher Indonesia and we uh, and they uh, make a CYS talk every two weeks, once two week and all the alumni share something about themselves. And uh, we also have the uh, people from the mentor teacher who are in the Association of Indonesian Mentor Teacher. And we uh, make uh, workshops and then uh, uh, seminars and etc. Also, we have a journal for the young scientists. We call it Journal of Penalty Belia or Young Scientist Journal. Well, that's uh, about my center. Now, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, what happened in, uh, in, in school. When we talk about a research project, it, could, it must be a team consist of at least researcher and supervisor. But in the school, it will be students as researcher and mentor uh, and teacher as the mentor or supervisor. This will be very uh, special and challenging situation. Um, this is the operational link because the student and the, and the teacher are in the school. So uh, uh, we have to uh, involve school he here in the link and see what uh, the role of uh, each party. And don't forget uh, as a student at the secondary level school, there are also parents who have a special role in this uh, research activities. We will see this. Well, this, uh, this uh, what I'm talking here is about uh, the result of our project in the center. We did it uh, since 2015 and it was uh, going on until now. And this is some of the result. Of course, I cannot show you everything. Um, well, what have the student ha or has to have as a researcher? Here we uh, found that at least they should have inventive thinking, some skills, motivation, and attitude. Well, before I go uh, through the inventive thinking, let's see something here. There is problem we found in the, our research uh, uh, from the student. They all mention, almost often mention that the biggest problem in research project is at the beginning how to find the idea for the research. So uh, let me show you this. This is Elon Musk, everyone know him. This is some writing, this is very good writing. Else, Alan wanted to save payment method. So he created PayPal. Alan wanted to drive an electric car at his dream. So he founded Tesla Motors. He wanted to go to space. He created SpaceX. He wanted to faster, he wants faster transportation. He developed Hyperloop. And Alan, does not complain about how bad the world is because you know what he wants is really something big actually but he is changing the world by creating something so this uh, we have to learn from him student must learn from him be like alan you know why because if we have a look at what uh, the writing about Alan, there was a, the, the gap between what he wants and the real situation. Because at the beginning, the situation, they were not PayPal, they were not Tesla Motors, they were not SpaceX. Yeah. So they were between uh, what he wants, his dream or, uh, yeah, his dream. And what he wants or the dream is an ideal condition. An ideal condition also can be in the form of 
if someone solves a problem, solving a problem always going to a better or to an ideal condition. So then what we should do is find a problem. So when we got a problem just near around us, then we will get something that uh, has a gap. Then when we solve the problem, that's where the, uh, the, the, the research started and we can find our idea what to do in our research. So moving on to the inventive thinking, to do research, we should have something like this, inventive thinking. And in our research, we propose uh, six uh, elements of the inventive thinking. Uh, we can mention it like curiosity, adaptability, risk-taking, creativity, higher order thinking, and self-direction. We'll go through it one by one. Let's see uh, what is, uh, this is our finding from the research that, uh, and this is uh, what the student uh, feel or uh, perceive about those uh, elements of the inventive thinking from the student side. Actually, we found different thing from the mentor side, but for today, I would like only uh, to present about what the student perceive about curiosity. The student curious about what happened around them. So this is a very good start to find a problem, yeah, to be curious. Adaptability, it uh, goes to the students, uh, how the students were willing to revise their research when getting new input from the expert. expert. So it, this is kind of uh, uh, how they can adapt something new. Yeah, because after working so many hours, then someone says that, oh, you better do this or that. Sometimes it's really difficult, difficult for us to be open to, to, to, to their input. Also, it is, uh, there is risk-taking. Risk-taking um, is uh, how the students open to criticism on their research project and accept it with open heart. So it is a little bit diff different with adaptability. Risk-taking is uh, how they, they, they want to take the risk of changing something, taking, taking criticism. You know, it's not good to hear some critics, but it is good if you can go beyond it. Creativity is how the students read widely to come up with a new idea for their research. Well, of course, uh, there is a lot of ways to do creativity, but in the context of science project or science project competition, creativity uh, is related to uh, reading widely. So then after that, you can come up with some idea. After you have some idea, then you must confirm it also by reading widely. And the higher order thinking in the context of science project competitions is like the students made proper conclusion about their research based on the empirical data that they have collected. So this is one of the thinking skill that uh, it's not easy and need to, uh, you know, you need to, to, to practice how to take uh, the good conclusion based on data. And then a self-direction is how the student had clear goal of what they wanted to achieve. This will be the, it will go to the motivation as well. Yeah, I will show you later. Well, now about the skills. How about the skills in preparation to a science competition? There are some skills I think everyone knows about that when we have to do a presentation in front of people, judges, also when we have to put our poster on and we have to take some uh, questions from the audience. So uh, it's important to have uh, information searching skill, like how to take, uh, how to manage data. Yeah? You can find a lot of uh, data from virtual source, from the internet, but you need to have skills in data management. Also scientific writing, it's not only writing. More important, it's also important is to take notes 
when you read something, when you when we, we read or we listen or we watch something, then we can take notes, the right notes yeah, to take. And this also need practices. Another skill is develop a good scientific poster, of course, with the proper research methodology. And the poster should be readable, not too small, uh, the, the size of the font, and also the aesthetics. Yeah? Uh, we want the people to, you know, like, uh, uh, they can see eye-catching, but not too much color or something like that. Uh, another skill is develop a good presentation slide for uh, supporting the uh, oral presentation. Uh, for this, you we need to have a clear, uh, the, the slide should be clear to the audience, meaning that it's coherent, you know, slide by slide. It has, uh, uh, it has coherence, coherency, good coherency. It has also to be readable and comfortable to the eyes. Uh, the last one, of, of course, the public speaking uh, in the international event, you have to be fluent in English and have proper body language. Now, there are also uh, motivation and attitude toward the science project competition. The mo we found that the motivation is uh, particip participation in science project competition gave the students chance to satisfy their curiosity. Of course, you also have some other motivations, but this is the highest. Uh, the, the more students choose is this one, to uh, satisfy their curiosity. And uh, the attitude is, uh, this, the student says that science project competition was a valuable experience according to the students. So they really like to go to the, uh, competition to have some experiences, yeah, very challenging and valuable experiences. Now, if you go back to the operational link, it was about the student. Now we go to the teacher or the mentor. So what happened to the teacher and the mentor? Um, this uh, questionnaire uh, or question uh, was given to the student, and this is how the students see the mentor, how they want the mentor to be. It's like this. Uh, the mentor should have positive behaviors, should be advisor, should be helper to them, and should be patient, accessible, and encouraging. What are they? Now let's see here. The positive behavior of the mentor. The students said that uh, the mentor should be friendly and good manner. You know, good manner here is uh, uh, it's about some students uh, who have uh, a different gender with the uh, supervisor. So they really need uh, the good manner from the mentor, of course. And the uh, mentor should act as parents as well, who are caring, loving, wise, sensitive to the student's needs. So the student is the subject, not the object and open to complaints and opinions. The mentor also should be uh, the preferable mentor. Also, they who are fun, cheerful, having sense of humor, funny, always smile and sociable. This could reduce the student stress. You know, after long way going to the, uh, doing research and or science project, it's a lot of stresses. The, Mentor also uh, expected to be assertive, deft, excited, never make fun of the students, not look down to the students, uh, communicative, critical toward the students' project, give hope, quick in responding. You know, like if we, if students uh, give them something to read, then the students really wait for the feedback and make the student independent and thorough. As advisor, the mentor, uh, the mentor are expected to provide suggestion and critics to the students to improve the science project and also show direction in conducting the science project because sometimes the students are lost and they say there's so many problems and I don't know where to go now. So the advisor have to give some advice about this. 
provide solution when the students are facing issues during the work in the science project. And it could be not only issues in the technical issues, it can only, uh, it can also be the non-technical issues. And show the student how to overcome failures in conducting a science project. Of course, there's a lot of failures. As the helper, the mentor were expected to help in several ways. In the early stage of the project, um, the mentor are expected to strengthen the basic knowledge regarding this, the project topics because uh, there is also a complaint from the student that they don't have uh, sufficient basic knowledge from the school. So they really want the uh, mentor teacher to help them with that providing up-to-date information about the topic, providing timeline of the research project, support the student in developing ideas on the research project, like not only uh, support in developing, but also give the idea. Well, actually this is not a good way to work. The idea should come from the student, but uh, the, the mentor or the teacher only helping to develop it provide guidelines on how to probably conduct a research project because they are still learning and actively involve in the students' research project. For example, involve in piloting the project. At the final stage of the research project, they need the mentor to evaluate the student work, correcting the student's papers, abstracts, and scientific posters support the student in the preparation of the oral presentation. They have to practice, practice and practice and they really need someone to listen. And also help them to overcome the nervousness before the oral presentation session. So meaning that they really want the mentor to be there with them. And they're also patient, encouraging, accessible and kind. Well, accessible here meaning that sometimes uh, the student, at any time, the student have uh, some, some problem or some issues. They want to, to ask always to, to make contact with the teacher, but sometimes the teacher or the mentor, you know, they're not really accessible. And that can make uh, a lot of stress to the student. Kind, well, some students mention about kindness is like, uh, yeah, my, uh, I really like my mentor because he, would like to make a discussion in a good environment, like bring me to the canteen and uh, buy me some drinks or some food. So a little bit, uh, some trait to the student. Now, um, we move on to the school, how the school should be. But well, let's see. About the school, this uh, um, I get this all information from the students and the teachers, and it's more like complain, complaining, complaining, but this is what we have. This is the data. So there is time restriction at school. Why? Because the students are, you know, very heavy with the school task, you know, many, many subjects and all subjects give them task. So it's too hard for them. And also there is still extra lesson after school, like preparation for the final exam, for national exam, for the highest grade of the student. They have to stay uh, after hour after school and they have extra lesson for that. Um, another thing is not preferable. Um, in the schools, more in Indonesia, the situation is, uh, is not in the curriculum uh, of school, uh, the research uh, project. So uh, it's only in the, what we call it, extra, um, extra activities after school. But uh, it is compulsory for the student to uh, choose one uh, activities after school, but uh, it's not preferable to take the uh, like science science class or science club, not as interesting as sport and art or music. And then the facilities, uh, they said that there, there is in inappropriate facilities at school like library, uh, laboratory and uh, library and laboratory because uh, it's only 
uh, support uh, at the curriculum level, but uh, are not for, you know, like uh, uh, experiment, uh, which sometimes need higher uh, uh, uh, laboratory or uh, library. Also internet connection at school is not very good. In Indonesia, we have a large range of schools, you know, like some of them really good, some of them don't have uh, the facilities like this. And some schools are in boarding school. In the boarding school, uh, it's very difficult to get permission to go to the laboratory or library after school. So they have problem with this. Now, last one is the parents. What's the parents? Uh, says about this or the student says about parents well mostly of the parents they have first priority uh, as the study to get good mark and that's important for continuing the study continuing the study to the next level so uh, because it is the first priority then other than that then they don't support so that uh, sometimes uh, the students uh, cannot ask for you know extra time to go out from the from the home to go to the library or to the laboratory, they cannot get the permission, and uh, some students also have uh, daily um, responsibility at home, so they have to help parents at home after school, and uh, the parents always say. First priority is school, so we have no funding for other than that, like for a science project. Well, now after students, school, teacher, and parents, we can see there's some links here. Links between student and teacher, student and school, teacher, mentor, and school. Student and school, it's um, very um, obvious, and teacher and school, it's uh, uh, also, it's about curriculum and responsibility of teacher in teaching. But here, I would like to put highlight on the uh, how the student and teacher work, and this is mentoring. We found from our uh, research that uh, there are four uh, mentoring uh, uh, elements: the supervision, role model, coaching, uh, communication. Sorry. Yeah, uh, well, for the mentoring, uh, for the supervision, it's like the mentors provided constructive and useful comments on the students on their science project. And then as the role model, the, uh, the, the mentor should proofread the student's writing before the submission. So proofread is very important. Some teachers, some teachers, they, they cannot do, the, do this. But this is very important. So the student knows that uh, a proofreading in uh, doing research project is very important. Proofread by an expert. And here at school, the teacher, the student look at the teacher as the, uh, the expert. And as the role model, the, the teacher should be creative, inspiring. Uh, smart, knowledgeable, full of ideas, innovative, experienced, active, hardworking, ambitious, committed, and optimistic. Then the student will follow like uh, how uh, the, the teacher like, uh, do like that. Uh, mentoring is also uh, coaching. The mentor provided suggestion to improve the student science project. Uh, and the communication that the mentor welcome feedback from the students. Then from our research, we found that there are two uh, uh, factors that are very important. This is coaching and role model. So this is a little bit surprising because uh, uh, role modeling at, that at the level of uh, secondary school students, the student is really look at the teacher. The teacher is everything for them. So uh, I think role model is, uh, uh, it's logic. So uh, I think uh, this is all about the uh, result of the, uh, our uh, research uh, about key factors to the 
success in science project competition. And at last, uh, we have some recommendations. First, we have four. Uh, sorry, it's five or it's double one. The curriculum of science project competition should be put place. Uh, wait, I cannot see this. Should be put place by integrating critical elements of inventive thinking with proper mentoring strategies. And the second one was curiosity, adaptability, risk taking, and creativity are found in the study as the most critical aspects of inventive thinking. Hence, school must nurture these skills to the students who are going to compete in science competition. And uh, next recommendation is science projects should be supported by adequate science facilities such as laboratory, library, and internet connections. Besides, it's also important for the school to allocate time for conducting the science project and mentoring process. The teacher as the mentors to the student must be updated their research skills and deepen as well as broaden the knowledge in their subjects. In this way, the coaching process in the context of science project competition is expected to be smooth. So how the teacher updated it can be uh, through, uh, let's say, workshops for teacher, for the mentor teacher, and so on. And that's what we do in the Center for Young Scientists. We have the association for the mentor teacher, and we provide uh, uh, this kind of uh, workshops for them. And they also help each other in the association. So the association is very important. It's, like, it's working very well in Indonesia. And the last recommendation is uh, teachers as the mentor should possess good communication with the students for a comfortable environment and scientific discussions. Because uh, mentoring is a kind of a private uh, relationship between teacher and student. Uh, mostly they work in a classroom in the big uh, number, but in a science project, in conducting a research project or science project, both of them with, will have a close relationship. And this is, uh, this is very important. They should have a good communication. So this, this is all from me. Uh, it's all about the result. And I hope that this can help students uh, and also help the teachers in uh, conducting science project and probably to put strategy so you can have more success in science competition. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your speech, Monica. Monica Rahartiyet konuşması için teşekkür ediyoruz. E, tüm katılımcılar hatırlatmak istiyorum. Sorularınız varsa el kaldırarak ya da chat kısmından yazarak sorabilirsiniz. Um, we would like to thank Dr. Monica Rahati for her speech. Uh, and we continue with question and answering session. Uh, if you have any questions to our speaker, you can write or chat or you can ask direct directly. Okay, um, I actually wanted to ask how should we increase teachers awareness about this topic because a teacher can also uh, guide lead the uh, family too about the recommendation you, you just mentioned that how can we increase the awareness of teachers about this topic yeah well uh, there's nothing else you can do uh, then maybe you can uh, you can make uh, some seminars or workshop about this for teachers because uh, sometimes teachers are really, you know, they keen to work with the student, but they just don't know how to do it because the first priority of the student, of the teacher uh, working in the school is to transfer the knowledge, that's all. But, uh, you know, especially when the teacher is not on PhD, uh, the only like bachelor or master uh, in Indonesia, mostly they are only bachelor. So they're not competent to be uh, really to be a supervisor. So we can help them by providing workshops and uh, uh, something like that, Congress also conferences. And uh, 
also we uh, in um, maybe I can share what happened in Indonesia in the association of uh, mentor teacher. They also provide something like certification for mentor teacher. In this certification, uh, the teacher will be labeling like uh, you know label a grade A, B, or C. Uh, to get that, they have to get the workshop first. But after they get certain level, like higher level, then they can be a trainer to other teacher. So that means that teacher helps teacher and they can spread all over the country when they can do that. So we try to develop the system where not only send the center help the teacher, but the teacher also can help the teacher. That's through the system of teacher certification. Okay, I see. It's actually a, a huge problem in here, Turkey, too, because we also, our teachers usually have just bachelor de degrees, so it's a yeah. nice, nice uh, solution for that. Teachers help teachers. It's a chain. Yeah. It's great. It's a chain. It's actually great. Um, our next um, question is from Ibrahim Aydın. Mm -hmm. uh, most families attach importance to students solving test questions due to the structure of education system uh, from the project work. This is a huge obstacle for students to acquire 21st century skills. What are your recommendations to parents, students and mentor teachers on this issue? Sorry, the, the issue was, uh, what was the issue? The uh, issue is that uh, solving test questions, um, usually uh, ah. families are focused on uh, solving test questions instead of learning, actual learning. Uh, he's asking that, what are your recommendations to parents, students and mentor teachers about this problem? Yeah, this is a problem that uh, is a global problem. When the evaluation is, uh, you know, something like very objective, like you can choose A, B, C, it's very restricted. And uh, uh, there is no uh, space for creativity there for the student, you know, if they have some other opinion about how to answer the question, they have no space. So very important. Uh, for the school to change the, uh, what we call the method or the, uh, yeah, the method of teaching, uh, especially the evaluation uh, part. Uh, it, it has to be more, you know, uh, nowadays it's very, we have a very, what we call it, uh, mechanistic uh, learning, you know, everyone has to, be so fast and then uh, can, they can, uh, what do we call it? Uh, they can counting and then they can put all numbers and then they have exact uh, answer. And it has to be like that. Yeah. Well, it's not creative. There's no space for creative. So this, the school must change that. Then the teacher will follow. When the teacher follow, uh, Parents will follow, of course, because you know why? Um, in some uh, countries who has already very creative uh, learning, the parents are different. They are, since the students are small, the, the children are small, they always ask why, they always why, why? Not telling them to do this, telling them to do that, but let them do something when they, do something wrong they they ask why why did you do that why you do this then there will be explanation in doing research it's also similar if we take a problem to be the idea of the research then people will ask why do you choose that idea and then when we take the uh, solve uh, how to solve it people ask again why did you take that way to solve the problem. And if the student, you know, uh, already have uh, the, the, the, the way of uh, thinking, the way of uh, learning since they are at home, you know, like always ask, uh, people always ask why, then it will be uh, easy for them. 
So uh, uh, I can share also with you in Indonesia, we just, just try to change the curriculum to more creative 21st century learning. But what's raising problem of teacher? They are not used to it. So I said, yeah, I just work with the center. I work with the uh, creative learning through research project and probably this will help everyone, probably. Yeah, thank you, for, thank you so much. Uh, I also worked as a teacher for a while, so I know how it's hard when you try to teach something instead of making students memorize, but yes. the education system expects you to teach something in a specific time, so you have to make them memorize instead of teaching sometimes, and it's also so sad to do it. I mean, you are there to teach, but you forcing them the knowledge and you don't get enough uh, feedback from students in terms of yeah. knowing learning i can understand that thank you so much you're welcome uh, we have another uh, question from belit karaja yes uh, hello from turkey thank you monica for workshop i have a question um she wrote, uh, in Indonesia, is the government, uh, does government support the, uh, supports the students who are making projects? Uh, they, are they getting any other support from um, school or family? And where can they get support from? Yeah, well, uh, this... Uh... If we talk about uh, the, the country, the Ministry of Education, as I mentioned before, we, we just started with the uh, different curriculum. And I really like this new minister. Uh, he's, a, he's a very good person and he can see the vision, you know. But uh, again, uh, he changed the curriculum, but uh, the, the teacher and the schools are have problem with that. So. Uh, uh, we have kind of huge uh, hope for this year. So this year academic is the first time that uh, the school will uh, have a new kind of uh, evaluation. And he said that uh, you cannot learn like the way you learned before. Now we are expecting that. Now, about, but he, the, this minister is <clears throat> new and he worked not long before the pandemic. So, you know, this, the situation is very difficult now, very different, I mean, uh, by the pandemic, everything is online. That's a, another challenge, actually. Well, about the student who work with the science project, I must talk uh, about before pandemic. So in the normal situation, uh, the ministry, uh, they have some uh, support, but uh, the support is not in the, in the form of funding or something like that. But uh, if you got medal, then the, minist uh, the, the government will say, okay, this medal you can use for uh, to have some points. These points goes when you go to the, let's say to the university. And those points will help you to enter a good university. So that kind of support from the government. If we go internationally outside the country, um, they don't give you funding, but they will support you with, you know, like, oh, they, they, they, can, they can help you with the letters or something like that, with the permission or something like that. Oh, I see. Thank you. It's like, uh, you know, a spark starts a fire. So I hope you are the, um, what you are trying to do is become a huge thing, huge change for your education system. And I hope it's yeah. the same. It will be the same for us too. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Um, Monica, uh, we... I just want to know that uh, how do you motivate your students to do science or scientific projects in your country or in your center? What is the motivation okay. of your students? Okay. From my research, you can see the result. 
their motivation is, you know, to satisfy their curiosity. But that I ask them after they go into competition, after they, they finish all the project. But how I do in real? Well, I cannot lie. I have to put some, what, what, what, can, what can I say? Um, something they, they like to reach, medals. So I, sometimes I just tell them, do you want medals? Do you want to use it to go to university? Do you want to go abroad? Do you want to see other countries? Let's go, but you have to do some research. It will be fun, I will help you. Let's go. That's the beginning. You know, we have to give them something interesting, something they, they, they would like. But actually the medals is not everything. When they trapped in the science project, uh, conducting science project, they like it. It's kind of a way to trap them with the medals. When they inside, they like it. The other year, they will do it again. And then they will, they will say to other students, it's fun, it's nice. Even we don't get metal, but it's really fun. So it's, you have to trap them anyway. Thank you. You're um, welcome. We have another question from Ibrahim Maiden. Yes. Uh, he says, it's more enjoyable to do projects with hardworking and enthusiastic students than smart students who are not very willing. In fact, smart students are content with class success rather than projects. This is my observations. What kind of studies should we do for project-based work in students so that we can create a desire in students? Project time is a kind of sacrifice. I would be glad if you could say a few sentences about the reward for their sacrifices. Thank you for your seminar. Well, if I talk about the reward of what they have been doing, I always, uh, you know, I always encourage the, the schools, all the schools, please, you make your own competition. Why? because everyone who has worked with a conduct a project and they have, they finish a project. The student always like to be exposure, the exposure. So that is, that is the reward for them. So if you expose them, the talk in front of people, at least at the school, then they will be happy. At least that also, in the school, if you are a teacher, you have to fight to talk to the principal that we, they have to put this in, they, they have some mark and put it also in academic officially, this work. So uh, that's all I can say. Thank you for your answer. Um, then if, if there are any other questions, questions, we are waiting. I think there is no other question. Um, we would like to thank Dr. Monica uh, Rahati for her speech. We really enjoyed it. You just enlightened us. Um, dear participants, our workshop is over. Um, thank you for your participation. Değerli katılımcılar, oturumumuz burada sona eriyor. Teşekkür ediyoruz katılımınız için. And thank you so much again for for your speech, Monica. Thank You're you. welcome. You're welcome, Duygu. Thank you. Bye. Bye.